welcome to another live demonstration. Today I want to do a mixed media um, painting. So I've chosen to do it on one of these um, canvas panels. So it's got the same kind of texture as a canvas, um, a, a traditional canvas, but what it is is it's solid. It's, it's put onto a solid base, which is fantastic, especially if you want to use very heavy pieces of work. And I quite like using it anyway. I think it just kind of adds that little bit extra. It makes it really feel that bit special, that bit more solid. So it's mixed media. So I'm going to use different medias um, across the painting. Um, normally, I would have a lot more time to be able to let things dry because some things take 24 hours to dry. So I'm going to have to try and work out a way where I can work with still wet paint. Um, so I'm going to be using some acrylic, um, some Pebio um, mixed fantasy paints. I'm using a bit of Moon and a bit of um, Prism and I'll talk about those as I use them. And they create their own special effects. They can be used great for pouring and then they just do their own thing. I'm going to try and control them a little bit. Then I've got a, an array of tools which I will put on um, the bits and pieces of paint. So it's fun sometimes to just mix things up. I am fully aware of the different drying times, which is where you have to just be careful. So I'm going to use the acrylic first, just to create, this is going to be a picture of Blossom. We've just started coming into spring, it's 20th of March. Um, and we need to see a little bit of you know, new life coming through. And I love Blossom and it's, it's a really beautiful, it smells lovely as well. So just to anticipate some nice spring we're going to have. <laughs> well, I say that as the snow clears from outside. Um, I'm going to be painting some Blossom. So I've put some acrylic paint out onto the palette. I'm just mixing in a little bit of water because it's got a little bit um, stiff. I've had it sitting around in, in different temperature rooms. It, it's just something that happens. And I'm going to wet my painting knife. Well, technique, I think that's a palette knife because it's got a flat... Um, it goes from the, the knife bit to the handle flat. A painting knife has a, um, a crook in it. But I think generically they're called palette knives or painting knives. So it's not a big um, issue, but technically they are different. So I'm just loading up. This is one of my favorite shapes. And I'm going to just put it on and let the texture turning over just to, and I'm not worried too much about the bits I'm missing. Just seeing what shapes I can make from the painting knife itself. Just making sure that the branch gets a little smaller and thinner. So it's going up and into different shaped branches, some thinner branches. I like doing this with a knife. It just, it feels nice and it looks good, to be honest. I'm just going to put Maybe another branch coming out here, just changing. I'm also, as I'm doing it, just thinking a little about composition. Not overly concerned because I'm sure it'll work out and I can always adjust composition anyway. Are the branches too thin, too thick? Does it look... I'm going to take that one off, one coming, see how easy it is to create really nice branches. That actually looks like a hand. Uh, I want maybe one coming out here. And I'm going to put another colour, just, what I'm trying to do is just make sure that they all fit together. So I'm going to put another branch, maybe down here, just to add 
bit more balance. So I'm just picking up the colour with my knife. Sit there. Nita. Yes. I have a question from Chrissy. Who's uh, watching in Australia? She wants to know if you find the plastic knife harder to use than a metal knife. No, I actually like um, the plastic knife because it's got some flexibility. They're not inexpensive. I use both. I, a lot of people say, what do you prefer? And to be honest, I struggle to say which I like, what I don't like, because each thing, each tool has its own aspects. I'm using this because it's the only shape I can find um, we've got in this shaped um, knife, but I will often use it. And a painting knife is an essential part of painting, um, not just for application, but um, you, you mix your paints with a painting knife. Don't mix them with a brush. Now, the reason for that is the acrylic paint, especially, gets stuck right into the ferrule of your brush when you're mixing. And then as much as you clean, um, sometimes the um, paint does not come out, especially if it's dried on a little bit. It gets really dry in there and that starts the bristles to spread. So to prevent you shoving pigment into the ferrule of the brush, use a painting knife. And like I say, these are actually quite inexpensive and they're a lot of fun because they give you some really fun marks. Stand back. Like I say, I can't always see a huge amount in these lights. So a lot of it is done quite blind and I can't see the composition as well. But it looks fine. I can always alter it. I'm just going to add some more colour. So a bit of, I think this is burnt umber. Just a little bit of brown. Again, picking it up on the knife. It's got a bit dry easily remedied and quite nice because it's going to be a little bit thick so now you can see just add a little bit of colour and isn't that a really nice texture being created just by using a painting knife. Now acrylics do dry quite quickly um, so I'm not too bothered with these I'm sure they will be dry enough to enable me to get on with the final pieces, which is, I'm going to be using the Pebio Fantasy Paints. Now they take 24 hours to dry, so I'm going to use them last and try and use all the products that I know dry quickly straight away. May not be the best way, but it's the way it's going to suit this demonstration. Because we're live. Because we're live, Gary, yes. Well, some of us are. Oh, yeah, I'm live. <laughs> I've got coffee now, I'm all right. Okay, good. So you can see I'm just, as I'm thinking about it, I'm just adding those few extra lines because my brush is still. But I can easily overwork, so let me just stop. Sometimes it's better just to... I've got paint everywhere now, Gary. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> ideally... A lot of people should wear gloves when using the prism because it's a solvent-based paint um, and it, when it gets on your hands, it's, it's hard to get off. That's why I'm not using any brushes as well with this because it, as much as you can clean brushes, so don't use expensive brushes, um, you need solvents. I'm trying just to avoid using them. So the next thing that's still going to be wet, I'm going to be using this Pebio Cern Relief. Now this is wonderful stuff. It's great to be used alongside the Pebio um, paint so you can create an outline and drop in and I've done clips with that. I like it because you can add texture so you can add texture to your painting because it dries raised. So this is gold which is really shiny. What I'm going to do is just put little dots around painting and this again it's an acrylic based paint so it does dry quite quickly but it may not dry quickly enough so I think after I've done this I'll take we'll take a short break I'll try and dry 
Um, and you'll notice I'm not always following where the branches are. It, it just kind of pulls it together and just make sure that at the moment, this is something which your brain does. It's really hard to overcome. I've put all these dots randomly in my brain, but if you look at them, how evenly spaced are they? So I have to really think about making sure that I consciously um, break up that, what I feel is random when I find out it's not, and I'm realizing I'm going to be leaning on it. So again, consider, <laughs> I probably would have been better coming down that way. I know I would have been better coming down that way. Um, but see how close that is, how similar that is. And it will change once I put the petals on. Um, but I'm just thinking, and maybe I put one dot. This is so much fun. Is it, is it dotty, Gary? It's dotty. I can see it. <laughs> but like I say, they dry raised and it's fabulous. So onto the um, branches as well. Let's not leave them out. It just draws everything together. This painting needs to be fun. It's just trying to remember not to be so evenly spaced. Quite even. I know they do, and I'm really trying not to. It's so hard. I'm just going to put random dots here and there. I don't want them too close together because the paint spreads, but I'm trying, <laughs> trying so hard not to make them so even. Never mind, let's just go with it. Like I say, I'm aware of it. I know about it, but it is so difficult to do. Your brain kind of overrides what you're trying to achieve. See it. This is why I just dot these singles around, just because that will hopefully break up. I think that's looking quite nice as it is. Like I say, these will dry. They're both acrylic based, um, and I'm going to try and dry them in the short break. Taking it off canvas as well. Mm -hmm. I can always put some more on, but I want to just kind of give you the. the. <laughs> I really enjoy this, especially so I, I use it quite a lot on lots of different things. It's just a fabulous painting tool. It's got such a nice fine nozzle that you can get really nice lines but it just gives you this lovely texture and you'll notice once it's dried the first thing people will do is they want to touch it, they want to feel it and that's really a nice thing when it's not just a painting that you look at and can't touch. It's made from acrylic, it's fine and the dots stay raised and they feel um, really textual. So just dotting around, still looking very even. Never mind. So the dots are going to be the middle of the blossom. Putting some on. Like I say, if I have more time, I can plan it a little bit better, work out whether I've got enough coverage. But for this, I think it's going to work. And sometimes breaking up the randomness is as simple as just, that's, it's a lot better. Um, putting make this a heavily loaded branch. I 
need some more. Mm -mm. We'll see. I think I might just leave it there and let's see what happens. Because you just want to keep going. It's, just, it's nice just to... Okay, I'm going to leave it because otherwise I'll just keep going. That's going to be a bit boring for you. So, like I say, let's take a short break. Um, and I will try and dry this um, to enable when I put the next paint on. It doesn't run and mix as much as I want it to. Okay, so join me in a minute and we'll continue with this demonstration. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalog, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking, just join, they'll love it. Welcome back. So in that time I've tried to dry with a hairdryer. I'm not saying it's fully dry, but it's definitely going to be a little bit better. Like I say, if you've got your own time, you, you, you can walk away from it. So I was going to talk about um, the board, which I will do once I start putting on the next part. And this is Pebio fantasy paint. This is Moon. Now Moon, you can just drop on to a surface and it creates kind of like a hammered effect. It does it by itself. The key to using any of these paints is stirring. So just using a lollipop stick and really stirring. The other Pebio fantasy I'm going to be using is um, Prism. Now Prism again is solvent based and the key to using it is stirring. I mean, really stirring because then you get the effects. Um, creates kind of like a honeycomb effect. I doubt if you'll see it in this demonstration because I'm not going to be using enough, but these are fabulous paints. They're solvent based, so you can smell them and they take about 24 hours to dry. But when they dry, they dry to really hard enamely looking finish. So they're really wonderful. Like I say, with the CERN relief, you can block out areas and just drizzle them in. So stirring, biggest key. And I will stir every time I apply the paint as well. So the canvas board, this was an old canvas board, which I used to test um, colors on or test the quality of the canvas. So all I've done is I've used black gesso, and, um, primed it, um, just needed to sand down a little bit of, I've, was using oil and it's absolutely fine to go. I've used a couple of layers, allowing each layer to dry in between. You can't see it, but I missed a bit here, which is bothering me, but I've gone round all the sides as well. You don't have to, but I quite like the canvas as a whole, not just a surface to paint on, but it's, it's a unit. So I'm going to be used, I've tried different ways of dropping on and at the moment I'm quite happy with the colour shapers. Now the colour will spread a little bit more. One, two, three, 
four, five. So I, I looked and made sure I was looking correctly. And Blossom has, the Blossom I was looking at has five petals. One. Two, might be too much on there. Three, four. Like I say, it does move a little bit more than where you put it. Try and get it to touch a little bit so that it's not floating. As you notice, I have remembered to start from this side. But look how lovely and thick it is. I'm not sure if you will see the hammered effects, but as we move on, I'll come back and show you if I see any occurring. I'm going to drop another colour in, um, but I don't need to do that quickly because it's not going to dry quickly. I just like using something like this, which you don't need to... It will do its own thing. It will continue to work after you've put it on. Um, and so it's a little unpredictable. You can't always tell what's going to happen. And I quite like that. So, just going back in, finding dots. Won't use them all. And each time I do one, I'm learning from the one before. Do I need to go close up? How much paint do I need to put on? I don't that's too much but not overly bothered like I say they continue to develop one two so three dots in the middle five dots on the outside three four but some will get lost as they overlap and I might just drop a few in anyway one two it's a good job I have remembered to work this way oops, back because it's going to be very wet and I wouldn't be able to lean on it. So a little bit of a drip there, but I'm not overly bothered. It's not a big di issue. It's mixed media. It's part of the character of what you're doing. What I am remembering to do is to go over the edge of the canvas to take the picture outside canvas and that's not a very obvious blossom but see how the others are developing they're kind of doing it themselves anyway and like I say I'm going to drop another colour in because these are very um, white at the moment so what colour am I using pearl again oops it's not going to be a very good okay that's fine so as you see why I didn't want to do too many because it's going to take quite a lot of time. But with this I'm not worried about the paint drying. I'm just this one here. The blossom is quite dense, so there's plenty of flowers, plenty of petals. What's also nice is to go in and do a really nice study of the actual flower close up and see the colours. So taking it over the um, branches as well just so that they're part, so that not everything's floating separately from each other. All these kind of things are part of your thought on composition and how well the painting works as a whole. And like I say, if there's areas which I feel do need to be reworked, I can go back in. The hard bit is, is overdoing it. That's harder than stopping too soon, walking away and coming back. One, two, three, four. And then going, oh, that area didn't work. I think it's, it's going okay. It's, it's just a nice... do so again the 
standing back looking. So you've got your different textures from the acrylic on the bit too much. Just trying to quicken up for you, so I'm trying to load um, my tool a little bit quicker. So the texture of the um, bark is quite rough. You've got the raised texture of the middle and the shiny. It's it's really quite shiny. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that's another reason why why I like the gold. Is it just really just glistens and alongside this fabulous paint that you can see it's continuing to work and I think it's working really quite well I'm quite happy with it one two three Let's see if I can one two like I say, it's fabulous for pouring. You can just pour it on and move, let it do its own thing. Um, this, the fantasy range was um, originally made for jewellery blanks, so drop into jewellery blanks. And because of its fabulous characteristics that it makes its own kind of textures, um, you just can drop it in and you can mix. But Pebio have put it together in this mixed media paint. So not only can you use these two fantasy paints, you can use it alongside acrylics like I have done. You can use it alongside glass paint, which is much more transparent. Um, doesn't create its own effects but once you drop it in and mix with this paint it then creates another type of um, texture so like I say it can be totally random just drop in see how it goes then they can let it dry and you can do layers so 24 hours to let it dry um, and then you can put another layer on maybe painting with acrylics or another layer or I have done before resin so you do a little bit on your first layer let it dry put a layer of um, clear resin in and then you can put some more it just gives a much more 3d effect we did that goldfish didn't we we did the goldfish I used pens with that um, and the clear resin but you can actually use the different layers as well. I've tried it, it worked okay, but I've seen some fantastic ones with people just really making things pop out. But it's the thing about these kind of paints is, it's the fun to try and see what they do, see what they work with. So they're going to stay that raised shape and like I say, the first thing people will do is they'll just touch it. They'll put their hands on it and they'll feel, and I think that's really nice. I'm not precious about paintings. If you are, you put them behind glass. But, you know, it's, you can feel, you can hold, you can touch. And I think that just brings it closer. Okay, cool, getting there. So let's keep going. And you can see that I'm not being overly precious with the shapes and I'm quite happy with the shapes that they're making to be honest. I wish I could do it quicker for you but the paint isn't allowing me to. But then again I've seen people do things in 10 hours. Not going to be 10 hours Gary. Good. <laughs> I'm usually bored after an hour. A lot of my paintings are done quite quickly. I don't often take things over the next day. Doesn't mean I haven't, but I'll only take it over the next day if I feel I'm, I'm lost and I need to come back to it. Cool. Get in there. So this is quite, and actually looking at it, it's looking quite, again, a little bit even. I'm going to have to try and break that. You devil of a brain that, likes things to be 
even. But Gary would be pleased. He likes nice, even and straight. I like symmetry. Symmetry. Is that what we're looking at? Not quite. No. So, just dropping colour on. Just keep looking back, see where you do need some more blossom. And it, it's usually a lot more dense than this. So you'd see layer over layer. And like I say, if I have time, I possibly could do that. You know, put one layer down, then put, let it dry, put another layer of um, blossom on top and really make it stick out 3D. But I really haven't got time to stand here and wait 24 hours. Um, Gary would have nodded off by then anyway. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to just do it as a single layer just to see, give you the opportunity to see what the paint can do. I lost count then. Three, four, five. Another one here. One, two, three, four. Five. It's just kind of like it's opening itself. It's blossoming. I know it sounds that's a really corny thing to say, but it really does. It's evolving. You can just see the painting evolve the more you put on. And it's actually quite a nice thing to do to see to see it from a blank canvas to start to actually grow before you. So. One, two, three, four, five. I think I need one here. One, two, three, four, five. You can see I'm getting a little bit quicker, but that's just, again, learning the tools, to be honest. One, two. Sorry, Gary. Jumping all over, Jumping the all over the place. I could hear the camera kind of try to catch up. So I knew he was in his mind. He's going, oh, wasn't expecting that one. Sorry. Um, I want to jump down, but I'm not going to now. I'm going to. It's fine. The way the reason I jump around is it's part of me being able to see and kind of judging the balance of the painting. A lot of people do it in nice, controlled manner, which I don't, Gary. Um, I just, I jump around. It just, I could suddenly see something and think, ah, it needs a little bit of work in that area. So I will jump to it, which does mean I miss things sometimes. But that's why you walk away from your painting. And you come back. Ah, oh, he's coming on nicely. Okay, let's fill out these ones. Two, three, four, five. The reason I've also used this colour shaper is it's much easier to clean. Much easier than using a brush. It doesn't mean you can't use a brush, but it's a devil to clean with when you've got to use solvents. Um, and you really have to really clean. A good brush cleaner is always essential. That's looking odd here, so I've put some dots. So this isn't a brush. It will just simply wipe off. So again, I'm adapting what tools I'm using just for ease. But actually, it's working pretty good. The shape is good. There's a nice bundle here. I'm going to try and work my way down, Gary. It's all good. I'll keep up. <laughs> you keep up. <laughs> it's just when I can hear the cameras whirl quite quickly, and I know he's just trying to catch up with me. I don't mean to. Just my brain is just working. Keeping me on my toes. It keeps you on your toes. Keeps you awake. Okay. So you'll see I'm getting a little bit looser. That's probably... I'm just trying to hurry up, but I think that you can see how it works anyway. Anita? Yes? Colleen 
Jean who's watching says it looks beautiful. Thank you very much. She's, it, she's getting lots of ideas. So, well, that's what this is why I do these um, demonstrations. It's it's not just to sh not to show you what I can do. It's to show you what mediums are out there. Give you ideas. Have a go. You don't have to have the same colours. You don't have to have the same tools. But you know, hopefully, hopefully you'll go out and go. Oh yeah, let's have a look. Maybe you'll do it very differently. But as long as you get inspired, that's really a lot of the reason why we do these live demonstrations to bring new products to you to show you what's out there on the market. Sometimes they're so very new because I know there's some very new products coming out um, soon. Other times it's just to give you tips, techniques, even talk about you know what papers there are and what does it mean by a not surface, a rough surface. If, you, if you're not told you don't know and it can be very overwhelming so i try and bring all that information as much as i can to you so you can go out there and not be as intimidated or if you you know try something new maybe move to a different medium which can be very scary but if you make it look like actually let's see what i can achieve then Good on you. Like I say, some people, I've said this before, I've known people go, I'm sticking with watercolour, I'm only doing watercolour, I am not. don't feel like I'm very good. And all they need is a change of medium. And there may be a coloured pencil or a graphic, a graphite artist. It may be something, and then they, they're much happier. But without trying, you don't find what kind of artist you are. It's almost like we're here to inform, encourage, and inspire. I know, Gary. It's really, it's really good, that, isn't it? You've got a quote there and ready. Okay, I'm nearly there, Gary. Well, nearly. nearly, and then I want to put another colour on. But that won't take long, because that's a, just a very little drop. So I don't know if you've seen, I've actually changed my technique. Um, moving on, I was much more controlled at the beginning. Now I'm, lot, I'm a lot looser, but I don't feel I've lost any of the shape I was getting in the first place. So it's all to do with learning. And even someone who's done it for years can learn a new skill, even with the medium that they're using. That's what I like about art. It's all, I'm constantly learning something new. How to make a background is my problem. I can make them all the time when I don't want them. But if I will really want to make a background, and I'm trying to do it on purpose, I know the principle, it just <laughs> doesn't work. Okay, let's take it over the edge. Nearly there, Gary. Nearly there. Nearly, and I'm not filled up all the dots. They're there as part of decoration. And I can still see it's still very <laughs> even. But okay, so a few more. Then I'll just add the last tiny bit of colour. One, two, three, four. Five. It doesn't matter if you've accidentally put four in or six in, unless someone is deliberately counting or know the exact type of blossom you're trying to create. It's not a big issue. This is all about texture. It's all about letting the medium do it. Same thing. I'm having a little bit of a dribble as it comes out as well. Not a problem, it just adds more texture. Like I say, if I wanted a controlled painting, I'd choose a different medium. I'd choose one that I know I can control with this. I know it, it creates its own pattern. So, was that a little bit easier to follow when I had a little bit of a, a map then, Gary? Yes. Thank you. There we go. Oh, one there. Nearly done, these last few here. And then, I'm going to have a quick look, maybe drop in a few more. 
random petals. Oops, it's a bit big. I was ready for that one. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> just, I'm just dropping in a little bit more texture. Like I say, I can go back in looking at where maybe I can unrandomize it. Is that a word? Yeah, it is now. To make it more random, to close up gaps, um, which you can't always see when you're initially putting the colours down. Let's just do a little bit of a... Sorry, that was really all over the place, wasn't it? That's it, I'm going to stop now because I want to add a, that last final bit of colour and we're spending a lot of time. So I'm just using a wet wipe just to clean off. And you can see how actually easy that is apart from I've got acrylic paint on one side. So you can see how easy it is to clean, which is why I chose this particular tool. It's so much easier than using a brush. So stirring, like I say, the key to this is stirring. What I might do is just use the stick I've stirred with. It's a bit thick. These have been sitting around for a while, so they are a bit thick. But just dribble it around. It's going to work fine. I'll do that. Go. Sorry. Just catching the outer edge. Like I say, it does its own thing anyway. It's going to create its own patterns. I just think it needs a little bit more colour. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way again, aren't I? I'm doing bottom to top. Oh, go back to top left. Left, okay. And I about want to do that one now. I'm on my way up to the top left, just passing these as I go. That's, I'm going now. This is why I usually have paint all the way up my arm, because I've leaned on it. And it, it's just, it's something you should be aware of, but I live with it. If I haven't got different colours on my arms, I don't feel I've done any work. Now, see how much quicker that is? And I know it's going to control, do its own thing anyway. Just adding that lovely, and I think that's really just made it just zing a little bit more. It's just... So each time I'm using it, I'm stirring. It is a little bit thicker than you normally get it when you get it first time. It's just settled. I don't want to put too much colour on because it's the initial colour is the white. Like I say, it possibly better if I'd put the gold dots on afterwards because I might be losing some of them under the PBO but for this I couldn't do that because I, I, it wouldn't have dried. Oops, that's quite a big blob, never mind. So hopefully this will one point out areas that I might need to work on but it's just adding that little bit of colour not controlling it just dropping it in and like I say ideally I think I probably could put the gold on top but that's something that you can do if you're trying at home and it doesn't have to be the Pebio I'm just using the Pebio because I like it you can do the same with acrylics do the same with anything you've got hanging around. Just done. And you can see some of these aren't all obvious five-petaled flowers, but some are, and because there are some, 
think that's just, you know, giving the brain the indication. Yeah, I would have done the gold on top. I'm losing a lot of them. Don't know what that was. Let's just add some red in it anyway. Yeah, I think that's kind of what I was looking for, the white with the little pink bits in the, mid in the middle. But apparently blossom comes from pitted fruit. Cherries, though. Cherries. Yeah. Or apples. Or, you know the blossom I like most? It's a hawthorn. I think that smells fabulous if you're walking down a country lane. Makes me sneeze. <laughs> uh, it still smells nice, but that's one of my favourites. Um, but you do start, when you start to see that fresh pink blossom, it's usually on the trees, and then it floats down really gracefully. I think you just kind of know spring is starting. Everything's going to be new possibility of the summer. We're talking UK, obviously, so that's usually rainy and windy but you know the possibilities there we can always hope one day one day well, we do get we some we do get sunshine but not that often one day, one day we, we it's usually if we've had a week of sunshine we're in a uh, drought i think that's it get oh no a couple down here nearly Other than that, we're hardy. No, I'm going to stop. I think it's done there. If I've missed any, never mind. But I hope you can see that it's, a lot of it is just having, see, now I can see it and I've stepped back, it's overcrowded. But it's adding texture, it's using different mediums, it's using different um, surfaces. Like I say, this solid board was one I had stored away and already had a bit of paint on it. So scrape back, reuse. So I hope you enjoyed that um, demonstration. A lot of dotting, lots of texture. I know when it dries, as you can just feel it, but it's not dry yet. Um, and join us on Friday for a live workshop with Sue Williams.